I'm going to start these videos by saying I'm not a professional motorcycle mechanic. Um, all I had to go by was the manual for some of the stuff. The reason why I did this video was because the lift kit and the exhaust kit didn't come with written instructions. So I was figured this might help some people as they go to install their stuff. <clears throat> um, what I'll do is I'll put links in the bottom of the video for the lift kit from Forever Rad and for the exhaust kit from TOS and for the spring compressor tool from Traction. And let's get to the fun part. What's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to be installing this 2 inch lift kit from Kyle at Forever Rad. Um, it fits all your challengers and pursuits. Uh, obviously the manual. Uh, the manual calls for a special fork tool. We're going to see if we can use this old traction uh, tool I had from a previous spike. Um, it's your standard USD fork so we'll see how it does. If it doesn't work, you'll see it in the video. Um, bike's already up on the stand. We're going to tackle the front first and then I'll move back to the rear. Um, I have a TOS exhaust coming in so I got the rear subframe as well so the back of the bike has to come off anyway. So I'll pull the tire off and it should make coming getting to that uh, rear shock a good bit easier. So we'll see how it goes. To get the front off you'll need a 14 millimeter, a 8 millimeter, and a 6 millimeter. You will loosen this top clamp bolt up here. These pinch bolts, your axle, your brake caliper, and obviously your fender. All right, so if you have the lighted headdress and you don't want to take the, your, uh, your entire fairing off to unplug it back here, what I did was I removed the tire first and then removed the fender from the forks and then just set it there on the box, um, obviously after you remove the calipers. And then you also need a five millimeter to uh, pull this harness off for the speed sensor. With that all done, you can go ahead and loosen your three pinch bolts on either side with your six millimeter Allen. Also, sometimes even when you loosen these pinch bolts up, um, there's still a seam back here. And what you can do is take a nice flat head, stick it in the seam and pry a little bit and with a little, little wiggle, um, the forks will come. Forks come right out. That's just all surface dust, no scratches. There we go, one fork out. Forks are off. To my surprise, I have one inspection sticker for eight, and two inspection stickers for 10. Huh. Okay, for the fork caps, you will need a 32 millimeter these big boys Get on there. and for your stock ones you'll need a 22 millimeter Let's see what we get here this comes off all right the tool is on so what you're gonna have to do is have somebody press down on this and we'll slide this little guy in here, then we can loosen this cap. And it works. So with this tool pressed in, you have somebody holding it down. Obviously, you support this. And you stick a, oh, what size was it? Fourteen millimeter wrench in here. And then you just unscrew your cap. So you unscrew this one, we're going to take our spacer and screw it right on, right in the dick. Alright, so you're going to thread the top in, thread the nut back up there, then slowly let this back up, let it back up, there you go, with that centered, and then just remove the tool. Slide fork back up, screw it back on, you're good. One done. All right, here you can see the whole fork extension. It's the same diameter as the OEM fork. All it's gonna do is just push the fork down through your triple trees. All right, with everything up and installed, um, your maintenance manual pretty much makes it idiot proof. It tells you your torques, everything, where your clamps and how high to set that up. 
over here. We're all back together. Um, it's still kind of floating on the ground. And what I'm going to have to do is loosen these bolts here and bend this brake line back down just a little bit so I can get some extra brake line uh, clearance. The front is done. It took me about an hour and a half from start to finish. You see, take these two bolts out and bend the lines back down. And then you can just re-zip tie your ABS ring and your headdress light. Um, obviously all the torques are in the manual. Pretty easy to reassemble the front. Now we'll move on to the back. Now the front's done. <clears throat> We're going to move on to the back. Um, I shifted the jack back a little bit so the front wheel can be on the ground so it's a little bit more stable. Um, you'll need a 6mm Allen. Pop these side panels off and you have your two bolts for your seat here and here. And then your bolts for your saddlebags. If you have the back lights, you'll need to disconnect these before you take them apart. Um, this part of the video is might get a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm also putting the Toast exhaust on. So I'm going to try and do a video with that as well. And the whole back of the bike has to come apart for that anyway. So some parts will be talking about exhaust and some parts will be talking about the lift. Once the seat's off, you're going to just want to disconnect this plug here. Um, it's for your light spec here, so you don't have to take any of this off. You're going to use an 11 millimeter and remove these bolts on both sides for your sissy bar. And then you're going to remove these three bolts and there's a bolt right down here on both sides of the fender and the fender will just come right off. Um, and this push pin here. For these, you're going to need a 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket. And then just kind of pull out, out on both sides so it comes off these little pins. And it should straight up. Should. Well, I forgot. So this connector here was underneath the coolant expansion tank. And then you also have your antenna harness that needs to be unplugged. Now, it should lift right off. Instead of me screwing around and unzip tying this whole harness on the back of that fender, uh, just an 8mm socket and this antenna pulls right off and then the harness stays on the fender. Now you have the back of the bike, easy access. Uh, for the exhaust, we're going to take this subframe off because uh, the TOS option comes with a billet subframe that's going to replace all this. For the shock removal, the manual tells you to drop the swing arm and remove it. I really don't want to do that, so we're going to attempt to do is pull the overflow tank out. I'm just two 10 millimeter bolts. Just unplug this for the harness. Your overflow hose will kind of run up. And then there's a four millimeter Allen right down here. With that Allen out, I'm just kind of wiggle this on out of here. Uh, obviously don't tip it over or your antifreeze will come out. Um, the hose just kind of pulls right out. Now, we have much easier access to the bottom of that shock. At this point, what I want to do is I want to take this piece off. Um, there is a torch screw under here. Since I have to take the exhaust off anyway, I'm just going to remove this muffler. You don't have to. You can get to it with a small set of bit drivers. Um, to pull the muffler off, you need a 15 millimeter um, socket for this clamp under here. And then a 13 millimeter socket for these bolts back here. Then the muffler will just pull right off. Next, we're gonna pull the foot peg off. Um, it's an eight millimeter Allen. And then these star keys are a T30, I believe. Yep, T30. And then this assembly will come off. If you have crash bars, obviously you have to take them off as well. Now that's, that's all off, what we're going to do is pull this pin out here and what that allowed to do is a swing arm to drop so it'll give us a little bit better access to these bolts back here. Just need a pair of snap ring pliers and I just have a random screw that threads right in there. Then I'll just uh, put a set of pliers in there and pull that pin out. Alright, so with this pin out, um, you're able to jack the bike back up and then everything will settle back down. Um, this was kind of getting in the way of this adjuster so I moved that. And once you come down here, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to loosen your fuse box. Um, it's two 8mm screws. 
there's one here and one here, and then a eight millimeter ratcheting wrench is your best option here. Um, you can take these off of the retainer clips if you want a little bit more room. But now that they're off, as you can see, you get your two bolts here, and then we have your two bolts here with much greater access. I might even jack it up just a hair more to see if I can get them out a little bit easier. For the fun part, you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket. Go in like this, and we'll see if we can get them all out. I'm pretty sure Thor put these bolts in. So, when in doubt, impact it out. Oh yeah. Easy. Okay, so after reading on the form a little bit, thanks to John for a tip over there. If you lower the bike enough, you can actually get a socket on these two front ones. Um, obviously, it's pretty much all the way low, and it pushes that swing arm forward just enough. Now I can wiggle these brackets out of here. So after lots and lots of cussing, uh, you really couldn't see much with the camera when I was doing it. Um, the brackets are in, and you did, I did not have to drop the swing arm. Let's see if I can get in here a little better. Uh, what you have to do pretty much with two front bolts is just move the jack up and down until you can get them out. Um, there's this box right here that the two front bolts have to clear. Um, that was the biggest pain in the ass, getting that perfectly uh, set to the right height so the two bolts could come out. Um, yep, and then obviously just put your fuse box in. Um, all the torque values are in your manual, but she's in. And then obviously you can play with your height of your jack to get this uh, top pin in. But all in, that wasn't too bad. Now that's the end of the lift install. The front is already done, back's done. Before I get ahead of myself with taking the exhaust off, I'm gonna go ahead and put this panel back on. Um, I can put my peg back on, crash bars back on. Obviously the coolant tank can go back in. And double check my belt tension. Coolant tank's back in, everything's Hook back up and double check your level. Um, this panel's back on. I'm gonna wait to put my crash bar back on because the back support for the exhaust is gonna go here. Also, double check everything in here for clearance issues because when you had this axle or the swing arm going up and down, the shot kind of moves around in here. So just make sure you didn't pinch any wires, make sure everything's clearance well. And then you should be good to Reassemble everything. Um, if the lift is all you're doing, obviously put your fender back on and just repeat everything that we did at the beginning of the video. One last thing I almost forgot. Um, you'll want to get a kickstand lift block. This has two stainless rivets that go into this that hold this rubber piece on. What I found easiest was to just take a grinder and grind off the heads and punch rivets through. Um, I have this block here, but unfortunately this one was for a Harley, so the spacing it's a little bit different. I have a block from Forever Rad coming, so that should be here tomorrow. And that is the end of the lift.